Welcome to episode two of the Askham Studios Wedding Podcast. I'm Todd Widows, and we have the lovely... Kelly Widows? <laughs> That's right, Kelly Widows is in the house. <laughs> so this is a wedding podcast where we not just talk about like things from the videography end, but we like to talk to different vendors, and we talk, talk about the services that, that are offered so couples actually have a good idea of how to properly plan for their wedding day. So today's guest, we're very excited. Yay. We have Stacy Berlinson from Berlinson's Big Day Events. Stacy, can you introduce yourself, please? Hey, good morning. Happy Wednesday, loves. <laughs> hey, Stacy here, and look, the dog's already not agreeing with this, <laughs> so I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. We have a gigantic horse of a dog, and luckily he's sleeping in our daughter's bed right now because that's what he does whenever she's at school so um so stacy we had reached out to you about bringing you on like and so we have had oh i think it was like we've not personally met before today like you know like this but our companies have worked alongside each other uh what i think two times yeah you um you you two actually worked with my lead planner mazana last year i believe it was last fall and then i had the pleasure of working with gabriel and emmanuel in march of this year so we keep like crossing or like ships crossing paths but we never like form, uh, uh, we're not collided we have not collided yet <laughs> I don't, I don't think we're wanting to collide. Yeah. <laughs> That's such bad imagery. Uh, anyway, I, I so, think I'll keep the Zoom relationship going. This video <laughs> thing is really well me right now. <laughs> Can you tell us about like how you got started? So it, it's actually interesting because um, I come from a financial background. That was actually um, my profession for 21 years as, as a financial planner. And I did weddings on the side as my de-stressor. Yes, I know that sounds very, very strange, but weddings were literally my de-stressor. And so I helped friends, family members, you know, with their coordination and help plan their wedding. Um, the strangest thing in the world is seeing back in the day, again, I'm going to date myself a little bit, was when you had wedding announcements in the newspaper. And I saw for the first time ever, and it was the most uncomfortable thing, mistress state, you know, mistress of ceremonies, seeing mistress in front of my name really turned me like three shades red. It was so embarrassing, even though I know it wasn't in that context. <laughs> so, um, but you know, the more, the more I started doing it, the more I fell in love with it. And my husband was like, you know, babe, you're just so much happier. Um, the cheesy grin that you're witnessing right now and my couples get to witness truly does not leave my face. And so in 2017, I worked with a DJ um, helping his, um, his business out, uh, just, you know, was set up and stuff like that. We were at a winery and after we had set up, there's this poor girl running around like with her, you know, like a chicken with her head cut off and just totally frazzled. And I just said, Hey, since we're finished, do you mind if I go see if she needs any help and come to find out the bride had hired somebody from her work and, a, you know, a friend from work to be her coordinator. And she was just totally lost, totally, totally lost. So I stepped in and just, you know, helped get things going and, and finalized. And at the end of the night, the mom tipped me very, very well um, and said, you know, if, if you don't do this full time, you really need to get into it. And that's when the wheel started spinning. And so in 2017, I decided to bite the bullet and, and Burleson's Big Day Events was born. I will say I only spent five minutes on the name. <laughs> so it's not, not very, you know, original at all. Um, but it fits me, you know, what you see is what you get. And, you know, it, it's, it's just literally been a God that, you know, it, it really, it has been a deep dresser and, and, and I truly love every aspect of it. So when you had first started out in two, 2017 and, and also full disclosure, I had talked to Emmanuel, you know, ahead of time and I was like, oh, I'm going to have Stacy on the podcast. And he was like, you mean the super planner? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, your, your reputation definitely, definitely precedes you. But, you know, I was wondering like, you know, back in 2017, when you really kicked off, how was it as far as marketing, like how, how hard or how easy was it to get into the wedding industry? Strangely enough, it wasn't. <laughs> um, and I say that, um, not, you know, it. don't get me wrong. You do. You definitely have your struggles. Um, but I think coming from my background and, you know, I, you know, I've, I've always been a, a business savvy person. 
So having that niche, the financial side of it as well, you know, being able to budget and plan and, you know, and, and work accordingly and my sales techniques um, all truly helped me to launch my business. I'm not shy in any aspects whatsoever. Um, I always tell my couples that wedding planners are chameleons. We have to be able to adapt to every type of personality, to every type of situation. And yes, while my personality is, you know, this big, <laughs> um, I, I know how to taper that down. And, and that is truly a sales read you know, um, and you, you always want to have the best fit for you because you don't want to change who you are per se. Um, but you also know after meeting a couple that you could really be a benefit to their day. So sometimes you do have to adjust. So for me, jumping into this business full time, it wasn't as hard of a transition as possible. It's getting your foot in the door, meeting the right people, making those right connections, building those relationships. I mean, Emmanuel said it best, you know, it's, the day is planned around my couple and their VIP, but it also takes into account all of my professionals um, because it's all of us that make a day successful, not just myself. Um, and it's important to me that everybody is comfortable and everybody has what they need in order to succeed that day. So just kind of like leading into that a little bit too, I know for Todd and I, like <laughs> whenever we show up um, for a wedding, um, we were always feeling like we didn't, like everybody knew each other, like the vendors, you know, like all of the, like the photographer had this great relationship with, you know, the couple and Todd and I are just like, why don't we have that? Like we were so jealous because, you know, majority of the time photographers are able to, you know, do like a, an engagement shoot or something like that. So they've already spent like a little bit of like quality time, so to speak with the couple. Um, and, you know, of course for videography, that's just not something that is, is a typical thing to do. So we started doing like consultations and things like that. But um, how important do you think it is for the couples to, you know, for a day to really be just the best it could possibly be for the, the couples to really kind of get to know some of these vendors that they're going to be spending like all day with? How important do you think that is? It's critical in all honesty. Um, and more so, I think, from the aspect of photo and video, because you are with them from, you know, as soon as you get on site until the very last moment. And and I tell my couples that your wedding day is a production. It literally is. Um, I don't know if you ever did plays, you know, all through high school or college or anything like that. But from the moment they wake up in the morning until I tuck them away in their car at night, there's somebody in their face. And, and they have to perform and it's very exhausting if you're not used to performing. Um, you're, you, they're constantly having to be forced to stay in a particular moment. And I want to ensure that it's not forced. I want to ensure that they're truly enjoying their day. So getting to know their photo and video team is of utmost importance. Um, because again, you know, you're, you're literally having a camera on them 24 seven and like for myself, I'm going to be brutally honest. I hate being on the other side of the camera. I'm very awkward. Um, it, it does. It, it bothers me. So I'm like, shoot my hands. My hands are pretty, you know, just shoot me, you know, pitting on the boutonniere. I'm good with that. So, but don't get the face. <laughs> so, and I can only imagine what some of our couples feel like, especially the grooms. Our groom, our grooms can be so awkward and they're just, they're not used to that. So building that relationship early, I think it's very critical. Why, why don't videographers do engagement sessions like video or photographers do? That's what I've well, always some, wondered. Some do. I mean, I think it depends. For, for example, for like our company, um, you know, we do have a couple as far as uh, the rehearsal dinners that we're going to be doing this year. We're finding, though, since we've moved from Virginia to South Carolina, um, we're finding that we get more requests here mm -hmm. in South Carolina for the rehearsal dinner as opposed to the actual, you know, like in Virginia. Now, obviously, we still operate in Virginia, and Kelly and I still go up as needed, you right. know, for weddings. But I don't think we've ever had one question, you know, yeah, asked no to us about... No one's ever around. asked us to come to the rehearsal dinner for, you know, um, previously until we moved here. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then I guess the reason that in the, we don't ever do anything like prior to the day or whatever is because videography i think is one of those things that people are like oh do i need it do i not need it it's yeah. it's definitely one of those you know is this really in our budget kind of thing right. 
um, which is fine. I mean, we obviously we find a great value in what we do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Yeah, you don't need to convince us on why we need to be at your wedding. So, so, so we're we need to be there. <laughs> Whether you want it or not, you need us. So I think um, I think uh, out of all the professionals, I think photo and catering are the two like automatic must haves. Right. <laughs> well, besides your officiant and venue, of course, but everybody else is like an afterthought. But I do think that Kelly's right, though. I mean, it seems, and it's not the case with every couple, but it seems like, you know, probably like 70% of our leads, um, you know, and this is not meant in any derogatory way because it's definitely not, but it seems like video always falls on the bottom scale. And, and Kelly's right. Like, we do hear a lot in our consultations where, like, well, we don't know if we had it in the budget. You know, it's definitely something we wanted. Um, so I'm not saying that it's not important to them because I definitely think that it is obviously it wouldn't be reaching out but it always seems though like it does at least for us it seems like you know like probably like 60 70 percent is that but I you know, another thing I thought about kicking around you know was with like some of our 2023 uh couples you know because 2022 is already pretty well booked up but um trying to offer like a almost like a like an engagement session where it is a uh like a as you get getting closer, it's something a session with a couple where it's a kind of like a digital save the date, if that makes sense. You know, I so like I wanted to ask you though, like with your financial planning background, you know, do you, do you is that something that you have offered post wedding as well? Because you have the financial, you know, like as far as like budgeting and stuff like that, or is that something you just strictly keep within the confines of? the wedding process. Yeah, actually, um, I, I'm no, I'm no longer a financial planner, so I don't do it anymore, but okay. I, I do have the, it's just, it's too much. You know, my husband has his small business. I have my small business and then to, and, and to have another, you know, third business, it was just too much. Um, so something had to go and I chose the financial side of things. But, um, with that being said, I definitely, you know, help, you know, budget prioritizing is very, very crucial. Um, as you're aware, a lot of times our couples don't know, uh, but they don't really have a budget. They have an idea in their head, but until they really start diving down into it, they're lost. They're totally lost. Um, and so having me start early in the process, I'm able to define that for them. I'm mm -hmm. able to set up those boundaries. I'm able to find out what's priority to them, what's important to them and budget around that accordingly. So that way, you know, if, if $50,000 is all that their budget is, well, then we take that into account and, and we're going to keep them close to that. You know, that's that's one of the things that I love about having that financial side of things is that's just an added benefit um, and value that I bring to the table, you know, because everybody has a budget and, and I never want to see my couples go into debt. I don't right. want them turning to the credit cards. I don't want them taking out personal loans. I want them to start this next chapter of their life totally debt free without having to worry about it. Focus on buying your house. You know, if, if that is that next step, focus on starting that family. If that is that next step, but let's not focus on trying to put off your wedding as that next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that that's something that we try to offer as well. And, you know, obviously, like I said, I don't want to keep this necessarily focused on, us, but I mean, as well, but I mean, but w with what we do, we try to eliminate like budget being a barrier. So we don't want to, you know, we go out of our way to try to make sure we're working with couples because when we're finding out that, you know, like the budget, okay, we've got maybe we could spend 15 to two grand, you know, we're trying to make sure we're maximizing what we do, you know, within those packages, you know, for couples. But it's, it's important to know because I mean, a lot of couples, so a lot of couples, you know, when they're starting out, they, like you said, they don't have an idea of, you know, like what everything's going to cost. So I think that we found just from our consultations that we do that obviously venue is number one, you know, and then, you know, normally it's photography is already booked. And I think that they'll probably have what DJ would you say? So, I, I mean, I think then they're looking at the, like, you know, Stacey was saying kind of like catering mm -hmm. and, um, you know, things like that. I think that in our experience from when we've talked to brides, um, you know, like videographer, DJ, and possibly even like if, the, if they have not already hired a planner, um, then they're looking at, do we, 
want someone like 30 days out for, you know, oh, things sure. like that. Do you have, Stacey, that was one question I had for you. Do you have a lot of people that come to you like that have already gotten a lot of stuff in place and they're just saying, hey, I just need someone to kind of help us, you know, maybe navigate like the back end of our planning process. Do you, is that service, is that services that you offer or are you like strictly we're going through the whole entire thing with our couples? Yeah, I, I wish I can say that that I do only full service planning from start to finish um, just because that, that is really where I, I shine the most and I get the most time with my couples so I can add in those magical elements into the day. But no, I, I do still management is what we call it in the professional world. There is no such thing as a day of. <laughs> there really isn't, you know, and, and if, a, if a couple is looking for a day of run, please, you, this is an investment. You know, a wedding is an investment and it's a luxury item. It's not something you do every day. And to literally blindly entrust a total stranger to execute your vision, it, it's just not possible. It, you, you know, you're, you're going to end up you a little disappointed, <laughs> you know, to say the least. So yes, um, I, I do management as well. Um, I prefer the longer the relationship, the better. Um, I literally just had, um, a, uh, a 45 day couple reach out to me. Um, and, and I just executed their wedding and it, it is different because you don't have the time to build those relationships. And there's so much more that I know as a professional, I could have brought to their day if I would have just gotten to know them a little bit better. Um, their personalities were just, I mean, just spot on. They were perfect for, for my business and, and the type of couple I want to represent. Um, and like I said, not having longer than 45 days would have been ideal, you know, but, uh, but I'm not going to turn anybody away if it's a good fit. It needs to be a good fit. I think one of the takeaways that we, that helped us to curate our questionnaire or our consultations because of those relationships that we build out of that. Um, I think we've had numerous couples that have commented after the fact, if you want to work with someone that wants, you know, that really cares about you and wants to get to know you, I think those are good things as a, as a company or as an entity to be taken on because it is, you know, and it is an investment in the day into your lives. You're invited in total strangers. And those personalities need to match up to to the couple's personalities. Now, is there ever a fact, is there ever a case where you've started the process and you were like early, you realized that maybe this wasn't a good fit? You mean have I ever had to fire a couple? <laughs> yes. <yeah. laughs> um, no. Um, so even in my early years, um, I, I I was picky, and and I'm going to chalk that up, you know, because I had a full time job. And I had steady income coming in. So I was never, and I don't want to use the word desperate, you know, but I was never put into a situation to where I had to take a couple because I, I needed to pay the bills or I needed to take care of my family. So um, with that being said, I've always been very, very particular. Now, during the initial consultation, I'll be more than happy to say, you know, I really don't feel that I'm going to be the best fit for your day. Um, and I, then I give them, you know, other individuals to reach out to other professionals in the area that I, I truly believe would. Um, so getting to know even other professionals and the, you know, other planners in the area is important. I do referrals all the time, you know, not necessarily based on budget, but based on personality, um, because it is key. It truly is key. Yeah. So I'm just, when you said, you know, have you ever had to like fire somebody? I'm sitting here thinking like, you know, cause Todd, Todd and I have been trying to be, or really Todd more so than me, but he was like, he's all about these Instagram reels and things like that. And so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, man, that would be an interesting reel to like be sitting there with the client, just be like, you're fired. <laughs> you know? no, we, and full disclosure, neither Stacy or Kelly and I are trying to sound like it's that, like, you know, like, no. oh, well, we're just, you know, I, I just, I want to put that disclaimer on there because I think that question could be mis misconstrued on what, what, we're, what we're asking, you know. Well, so. No, it really, again, it really comes down to the quality of the day that, that us professionals are able to provide that couple and it needs to fit. It truly needs to fit. And if, and if you're not going to fit early on, like for me, for example, I have a process. And from the moment that a couple reaches out to me, I start them through the process. And if they're not willing to embrace my process, that already is a red flag. Be, you know, so my couples are already put to a test 
as soon as I get an email because I want to know that they can follow a process because my process has been flawless. You know, if, if they can follow the process, then their planning is stress-free, literally stress-free. Things are done weeks in advance, not waiting up until the week of. And I, I'm able to put that pretty little bow around their day and give them a beautiful day. Our reviews speak for themselves, you know, because those couples chose to follow a process. And, and that's what I'm looking for. Um, so that's why that initial consultation is, you know, it's really critical. And as I said, I, I'm okay with saying, I don't think I'm the best fit for you. It's a little trickier when they ask why. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and you just, you just have to tell them, you know, that, that I have a process and I, I don't think that you're able to embrace, you know, how we do things. So you're not giving them the old Seinfeld, it's not you, it's me. Routine. No, no. The other thing, you know, we you have to remember that a lot of these couples have never been married before. They don't know what to expect. Right. Um, right. And so it's educating them along the way as well. These are not necessarily I, mean, I don't want to be like freebie giveaways, but these are insightful for couples because a lot of couples don't have an idea. Like I how many times um, you know, we'll be getting, I don't know how many times we'll be getting the, like the timeline of like the last minute, you know? So like, you know, that's one big, big thing for us is like, we need to be able to, to build our day. And, you know, I mean, we have, well, I don't even think it's so much building our day. I think that, um, especially for, um, you know, brides, I think that, that don't necessarily have, um, a, a, you know, that do have planners, but don't necessarily have like a relationship that they've built with those planners. Um, I think that it's a little bit more difficult. So they like, you know, people automatically think, oh, I only need 10 minutes to put my dress on. It's like, um, not really. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, sometimes you need more than that. It Like, it really depends on the bride. Like if, if you're someone that's like, I'm just going to put it on myself. I'm going to have somebody zip me up. I'm good to go then yeah, you probably don't need a lot of time for that. But if you're thinking, I want my mom there, I want my sister there, I've got, you know, buttons up the back, I've got, you know, the 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 crochet hook, like there's, there can be a lot of different components to that. And then if you're planning on having photos taken during that time process, then you have to allow more than like 10 minutes to have that happen. But if you've never been a bride, you don't know this. You just think, I'm just putting my dress on and I'm good to go. Um, and so if you don't have someone that's kind of advising you and saying, hey, you're probably going to need a little bit more than than this, um, then building your own timeline can definitely be a scary process for sure. Yeah. Well, scary to the vendors as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> well so. And it does. The, the timeline always blows my couple's mind. They're like, why are you allotting, you know, three hours to get ready and for photos? And it's like, you'll see. <laughs> it, goes back, it goes back to that education part because I, I, I even for me, it takes me longer than 10 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and us, we are, girls are high maintenance, you know, ladies are high maintenance, nothing ever fits right. You know, we tried on our dress when we first got it, you know, bridesmaid speaking, and then, and then it's been tucked in a closet and we haven't pulled it out since. And, you know, we may have lost a little weight, gained a little weight, you know, our girls are showing more than they should, you know, so, <laughs> you know, and, you know, then I get a call on my walkie talkie radio, Stacy, we need you on the bridal suite, you know, type of thing. Um, so it's, you know, it, it always it always takes longer than you think. And mm -hmm. in a timeline, really, in all honesty, it's it's meant to put everybody's mind at ease because there's a flow of the day. But in all honesty, it's subjective and it's going to change. It really is. Right. And as long as I've given my pro team the time frame that they need in order to capture what what you've been contracted and what the couple wants, then it's a win. You know, what what happens in between those three hours? I don't care. <laughs> Right. You know, that's for you to, to, you know, walk them through and get that. Um, the only part that's critical for me is the ceremony. In all honesty, we are, that ceremony is on time and it needs to be, it needs to be absolutely perfect because there's no do-overs with the ceremony. Um, so, you know, um, Todd, like, well, I think Todd's seen a lot more of like the, you know, I don't want to say crazy. I, the word I want to use, I think is more, um, untraditional or, um, you know, unique to a couple as far as like, you know, 
entrances. And then we've also, um, you know, Todd always really gets a kick out of like when the best man does like a fake first look with the groom actually in a dress. And what? We've done it like twice and you thought it was hilarious. He's giving me this look like, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. I, I see the way we should do this more. Like we can actually see us. Um, but um, when like through your years, is there anything that like just really stands out that you're just like, I have, I can't even believe that I'm witnessing this right now. Have you ever had anything like that? Um, Actually, I'm not, I'm not surprised by any of it because I encourage my couples to be different. Okay. You know, tradition, flew, tradition flew out the window back in the early 2000s. Um, so again, bring your personalities to the day. You only get one day. You only get this one day. So do you, you know, um, I have a wedding coming up in June and literally the groom and the bride, they're having their wedding party stand on opposite sides because they want their friends to be able to see them, you right. know, instead of standing behind them. Um, yeah, you have your traditional parent swapping sides, which I absolutely love because I was that bride that had a nine foot wide aisle and my parents were literally staring at the back of my head. So when I shed a tear, they didn't see it. When I laughed, they didn't see it. Um, and, and so I encourage those because, it, you know, it's, it goes beyond just the couple that day. It's also about their VIPs and who they so chose to be by the side, by their sides to rep, to represent and witness. Um, they're just not another number to us. You know, they're, they're treated like family that day. Um, mm -hmm. so it's very, very important. So absolutely. You know, do you have to have the traditional introductions of best man and maid of honor or matron of honor go first? No, find that crazy, you know, couple or you know, individuals are going to kick off that introduction and knock it out of the ballpark um, and then have everybody else follow suit. You know, be step outside of the box, be different, be you, bring your personalities into this day. We've seen a lot of very, uh, for us, definitely unique, uh, unique entrances. So we've had mm -hmm. a bride that was brought in on, on the front loader of a tractor. Uh, we've had a bride that was brought in on a steam engine. <laughs> I think that like the, as far as entrances, those were, you know, pretty unique, but we've had, you know, we've had a whole variation of stuff being, being whether the end of the night is ending with fireworks, is ending, mm -hmm. ending with Chinese lanterns, you know, and that's one thing I think you really kind of hit on right there is that you can see the, the uniqueness of those couples coming out with their different, you know, with their different entrances or their different endings and, you know, throughout the day. And I think that's one of the things that we always like to make sure that we ask during our consultations, okay, are you planning on doing X, Y, Z? Like I can give you a perfect example. The, the Aaron, the wedding we did, they had the steam engine that was, you know, that we had, so she was coming in on a steam engine. So we had, she wanted to have drone, you know, the drone coverage of that as it was coming in. Plus we were doing a live stream of the wedding because it was back in the height of the COVID, you know, the, everything going on with COVID. Mm -hmm. So we had our hands full and it literally, Nobody. Had, they had bagpipes going yeah, on they had during, bagpipes this, going during the on. ceremony. Like, they, but oh. that that literally came within seconds of falling apart on <laughs> our end, and you know, and luckily, I mean, that was our first wedding we ever had a manual at, and thank God we had a manual that day because I mean, I don't know how many times, like, and I think I don't know. I mean, I think maybe you know, divine intervention comes into play. Like there'll be times that we schedule to have like an extra body with us mm -hmm. for ad additional training or for you know or, or for whatever the case may be and those always seem to be the weddings like thank god we had so and so there because mm -hmm. like you know that was that was the probably like the most intense i felt you know like the ones with the live streams are always intense because it's you know because it's you know a lot of rushing to try to get everything set up and well, uh, well but, and like and like stacy said <laughs> you can't it's not like you can go back and redo it right, like right. if the people at the people at home miss it yeah they miss it and yeah. we don't ever want that to happen yeah, so it's so. definitely a lot more anxiety for sure well definitely stress around me so yeah. i mean kelly would tell you if there's any 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 time i'm definitely high strung during a wedding day it's right before the ceremony because i, I know like you just said we don't get to redo that mm -hmm. you know and if we may, if we mess that up I mean, that's even worse because we're the ones that are, you know, capturing the film of it, you know, so, but yeah. So do you find like a common theme whenever couples are reaching out to you 
Um, you know, do, uh, is there always something that happens during your consultation process that you think to yourself, like, you know, this is, you know, like a new trend for this year or, you know, I, you know, I've seen where uh, I've seen this trend for 2022 where they're saying like vaping is like the thing to do, you know? And so like, like, yeah, having like the couples like do blow this big plume of smoke, like vaping so, at the ceremony uh, during their photos and stuff like that. It's take it's out West out in California <laughs> to be taken off right now. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I actually haven't. Um, usually you, you know, initial consultations are always the, the typical trend is we're starting to feel overwhelmed. We don't want to have to work on our day. We don't want our family or friends to have to work on that day. You know, um, we're, you know, we're afraid we're going to miss something, you know, that type of thing. Um, you start getting into the nuts and bolts of it once the planning commences um, and, and you start having, and you're starting to have those conversations with a couple, you know, what do you want for X, Y, and Z? And how do you want to do this? And, and things like that. Um, I've not had the vaping thing come up yet. So that's, <laughs> that, that will now be on my radar. <laughs> I love couples that are, that want to step outside of the, the typical cookie cutter, you know, box that weddings, you know, have been placed into. Uh, you don't have to do things the same way. I mean, I love when a couple literally wants to do a private dinner, just the two of them. Oh my goodness. You know, I mean, I can work in as many quiet moments into the day as possible, but that truly is just them. They don't have to worry about their photo and video professionals. They don't have to worry about me. The only thing they have to worry about is catering, coming in to deliver their food. And it's truly just the two of them embracing dinner. Um, I'm, I'm starting to get more and more of those, which is wonderful. We've had uh, maybe one or two that have done that. A private dinner. Yeah, yeah. a private dinner. So. But I think, I know the one, they ended up not even really eating. Like, I think they got pulled or something like that. Yeah. And um, so it didn't work out as they had anticipated. But. Yeah, and, I, and, and that's always, I mean, that is a very, you know, that's definitely a very nice idea to have incorporated into your day. Like, you know, there, I say you're, you're, you're mentioning stuff that like, we don't even think about, like yeah. I'm not to, to piggyback back to the ceremony. Like I never really thought about the process where, you know, the families are on the opposite sides of each other. Yeah. I never know? thought about that either. So that was actually as many weddings as we've done. I've never realized it. Like I just never thought about it, you know? Yeah. I throw so. officiants all the time. I, I do. I throw officiants. I'm like, wait, what, what's happening? <laughs> like, just go with me. I've seen the parents switch because of like what Stacy was saying, like you, like I would want, like, I'd want to see my daughter, mm -hmm. you know, I'd want to see her face during this process. I mean, not that I wouldn't like the other person, but I would want, right. she's right. my kid, you know? Right. Um, but then, but the whole thing with like having their friends too, like, you know, I would have, I kind of would have liked to like seen like Leslie's face when she, you know, like when you and I were getting married and saw the tears rolling down her eyes, like right. I, I kind of would have liked that. So. Well, yeah, I mean, and so, you know, so, the, I mean, even in our consultations, we ask, like, you know, do you plan on being, like, pretty much, you know, what's, you know, look, normally we give them the traditional layout, like, normally <laughs> it's right and left, you know, for, you know, so we normally walk them through that for our process, but, you know. Maybe we'll mention maybe, that to some couples, if, yeah. Not to steal your <laughs> ideas, Tracy, but we may actually throw that into our consultation. It, it, it literally did not come from me. I just, you know. I, like I said, I just, I like, I like for couples to be different. I like for couples to step outside of that traditional box and, and be okay with it and own it. So, mm -hmm. yep. One of the biggest purposes of this podcast is to help enlighten couples to have them get to know the personalities of their vendors or potential vendors. So like, it's, it's always a good avenue. I mean, to be able to sit down, have a conversation with somebody and, and create that bond from the get go, whether that's a, 35 to 40 minute phone consultation at the beginning or whether that's like you know them finding this podcast at some point and being like oh well you know i'm considering hiring this person and their name comes up and then they can hear the candidness of this this conversation and so they get to know their they get to know their potential vendors or, or you know either way so stacy for for those couples that um you know, maybe you are, you know, getting into the situation, you know, later in, in the process or whatever. Um, is there any advice that you would really give to someone um, who's like just kind of at the very beginning if and if they're not reaching out to a planner or whatever, obviously you're probably your first advice would be like, well, reach out to a planner. Um, but is there anything that you would just say before they even get started? Like, is there like two or three things that you would say this is definitely must before you even dive into picking venues and all of that stuff. 
um, find out what's important to the couple. And, and, and I say couple because it is, it's, it's not a bride or a groom or a bride and a bride or a groom and a groom. You, you, it's, you know, it's not just one of you, it's, it's both of you. Um, find out what's important to both of you in this one day figure out, you know, those priority levels, you know, and set that budget, have an honest conversation, figure out if you're going to get support from family members, take your time. You know, you, you've entered into this relationship, you know, let's say you've been, you know, together for three years, engaged for two years. Sure. You know, you've been together for five years, but a wedding, wedding planning can be very, very stressful and it can change the dynamics of who you are as a couple. So don't lose, don't lose sight of that. Don't lose sight of, you know, why you're doing this in the first place. And remember to take breaks. It's not all about planning. Mm -hmm. It's also not all about rushing to get to the end game either. You need to remember why the two of you are doing what you're doing to begin with. And, and through, you know, embrace, embrace it, you know, embrace it and then enjoy it and include each other. You know, a lot of times I hear all the time, oh, the groom just wants to know, you know, what time to show up. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. That's fine, you know, but we're, I'm going to force them to come out of that shell a little bit more, you know, because again, it's, it's also their day. And then full disclosure, just for people that are listening to this, uh, I am not playing a sound effect of a cuckoo clock without, while Stacy is talking. I don't want it to seem like, yeah, I don't, it's a, it, she has a cuckoo clock. So, <laughs> you know, so don't think that I'm adding something in to make it sound like she's nuts. I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have stopped that. But if you've ever owned a cuckoo, you know how temperamental those things are. <laughs> so, so if that thing ever stopped, whew, yeah, that's my well, husband's project. It, it just seemed to go off both times you were talking. And I don't want people thinking I'm being like a jerk <laughs> afterwards and like adding in sound effects to your. <laughs> so. Well, it's obviously clear we've been on the, we've been talking for more than 30 minutes, though. Right, right. It's at least on time. Right, right. <laughs> So, Stacy, you know, obviously people can find you at Burleson's Big Day Events.com and on Instagram at Burleson's Big Day and Facebook, uh, Burleson's Big Day Events. If they wanted to contact you directly, what is a good avenue? I don't want to give your number out over the <laughs> thing. I'll, I'll, I'll let you do that so, if you want. <laughs> So, in, in all honesty, the, the best way to reach us is through our website, um, you know, or you can email me. My email is, is not easy whatsoever, so, but it, it, it does depict who I am. It's hello love <laughs> at burlesonsbigday.com. Um, Burleson can be a little tricky, but if you follow baseball, and here I go again dating myself, um, I was asked, you know, after I got married, if I was related to the professional baseball player, uh, Burleson, because that was his last name. So um, that's, that's the spelling of it. But really, um, through our website is the best way, best course of action. Stacey, I don't know if you have the same policy that Todd and I do. I'm, I'm, my guess would be that you do. Um, but, you know, we, we always tell our, our couples that, you know, if you have any questions or, you know, any concerns about anything throughout the wedding day, you know, definitely feel free to reach out. Um, you know, we always encourage our couples as well to kind of, you know, talk to any of their vendors about, you know, different ideas that might be available to them or things that, you know, they've seen experiences and things like that. Um, so I would assume that you probably are in that, well, with yes. planning, I think you have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I want to be that safety net. Um, I don't want them wondering if something is okay or not okay or, or any of that, you know, so that that's why a planner's here. We're, we are that safety net. Um, and the great thing with my couples is that they literally have access to my calendar. Um, when they come on board, they're given a link right to my calendar and they can schedule a time to do a Zoom or a phone call, you know, or whatever, or they can even e email or text, you know, but they literally have access to my calendar. So anytime that they need me for any reason, they just click on the calendar, schedule their time, tell me what they want to chat about. And it's, we're, it's making it happen. Stacy, is there any closing remarks that you would like to, you know, throw in for just, just congratulations to all those that have made it through COVID. Um, that was tough. You know, no, I truly believe that that no couple was meant to be forced to be next to their significant other 24 seven. So <laughs> congratulations if you made it through. <laughs> um, even for this old married person who's been married since 96, I will let you do the math. 
um, <laughs> on that one. Uh, it, it was even it was even tough for us, you know, older older together individuals. But if you made it through, then you know that your love is going to last. And um, and just focus on the importance of moving forward and remembering to take those breaks and remembering why you're doing this to begin with. So congratulations and all the happiness to everybody out there who is moving forward with their marriages. So, Stacy, thank you for joining us today. You know, we're definitely grateful to have had the opportunity to meet, air quotation marks, meet, you know, officially. This podcast can be found at Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and wherever great podcasts are found. We definitely encourage everyone that is in Virginia or surrounding that are looking for a wedding and event planning to contact Stacy Burleson. And that's B-U-R-L-E-S-O-N, Burlinson. Um, and that's, you know, Burlinson's Big Day Events.com. And once again, the Instagram is Burlinson's Big Day. And the Facebook is Burlinson's Big Day Events. So, Stacy, thank you again for coming on. We, you know, we're grateful to have the opportunity to have had you. Um, Kelly and I would like to say thank you. <laughs> I'm running out of stuff. Thank you for the so, opportunity. <laughs> It was a pleasure. <laughs> yes, it was very nice to be able to chat with you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Say bye, Kelly. Bye, Kelly. All right. Bye, you too.